what's going on guys welcome back to clash of the Dark. guys we're gonna go business strategy that used to completely dominate the entire town hall 11 scene before town hall 13 released but it kind of got overshadowed by the queen charge hogbinder hybrid and some of the new attacks with the siege barracks but it didn't lose any of its strength if anything it's only become stronger we're gonna go check it out in detail today it is the drag bat all right guys make sure the like button Hit that subscribe button and don't forget if you enjoy this content go in the bottom of your settings tab and type in code eric before you make any in-app purchase let's go dive into some tax so check it out guys i got a confession for you all youtubers myself included our job is to go and find the new the exciting the never seen before strategy and dangle in front of you like a carrot and make you come click on my videos right well, sometimes we got to remember that there are old strategies around there that didn't go anywhere and we got to revisit them occasionally. So this is the drag bat. The drag bat is where we come in with the queen on one side, potentially with the king, and we use an e-drag or something to funnel the other side. Either way, we're clearing out the trash on both sides so we can shoot the dragons directly into the eagle artillery and then go take as much splash damage on the base as possible and then we sweep the rest with bats. It's a very simple strategy and it still accounts to this day for about 50% of all triples that are done at Town Hall 11 and it just dominates bases. So one of the things that we gotta consider when we're doing this is where is the CC? relative to where my heroes are coming in because we're gonna treat that CC no matter what, like there's gonna be a Hound or Golem or Ice Golems or something really, really tanky in there that we could potentially avoid if we don't draw it out. Even if we have like archers and witches and stuff like that come out, we don't want those going to my heroes ever because it makes them spread apart. We want to fight them head on with the dragons. We charge the dragons in, we get to the eagle artillery as quick as possible, and then we start freezing up sets of wizard towers and infernos. Looks like he missed a freeze here, so we had to use another one. That was a little bit of an unfortunate mistake, but you can see how much punch these dragons have as they move through the base here. Just keeps on freezing the wizard towers as he moves through and allows the bats to go and just uh, stay safe all the way through with the dragons still moving on the other side. And these bases just go down so easy. It's crazy how powerful the strategy is. And ever since they added the level nine balloons and you can put those in your stone slammer, it's just made it even stronger. So you could do it with a blimp as well. There's a lot of different ways you could definitely get creative and go in and cause some damage, but the stone slammer is still the typical way to do it, just like we've always done. As soon as uh, bats were released to Town Hall 12, 11, and 10 back in the day, like we've been using the stone slammer as a strategy and people know exactly how to make it work. And a lot of people don't have access to siege barracks and stuff like that to do some of the fancy new strategies, which we'll go visit one of those at the end of the video, maybe. There's like a a P.E.K.K.A. smash variation with the siege barracks. It's really, really powerful right now. And I'll show you that at the end. But we're going to focus on this drag bat today. Let's go look for a couple more of these and I'll show you a little bit more in depth of how we're actually taking down bases with it. So I want to point out that almost every single one of these attacks was done fresh. They didn't know where the traps were. They had no idea where the Teslas were and they didn't know what was going to be in that CC. So in the space here, we got a multi inferno on one side. We got a single inferno on the other. We got the Eagle Artillery in the middle surrounded by Expos. This area over here is a very, very high damage density area and it's full of black mines making so dragons are also going to have trouble, but mainly targeting that queen charge. So people would have a struggle charging in here and keeping a queen alive as she loses healer after healer to black mines and making attacks like the queen charge hog miner hybrid very, very difficult. But he throws a couple balloons in front of the dragons and they're catching a lot of the black mines that preserves the dragon's health. He has the ward ability as soon as he gets into the meat of the base there and he is able to absorb the eagle shots or part of him at least and then he continues charging in the stone slammer comes in on the flank and he sends in an ice golem on the other side to go tank the first wizard tower allow those bats to start to group up as soon as they start to group up then they can start to one shot buildings but if there's a big test of farm popping down here the ice golem starts to cross the base as the dragons continue on they're starting to get dwindled down up on the top side the dragons are taking some heavy casualties and he keeps on freezing the wizard towers that single inferno you can almost ignore it the king swept in as he rounded across the bottom of the base there and he tanked the wizard tower for just a second watches it as soon as it became untanked he froze it again and the bass were able to sweep the entire base now he went really, really heavy on the bass, really heavy on the freezes, only one rage. And I highly, highly recommend that a Town Hall level you do that. When you get to the higher Town Hall levels, sometimes 12 and 13 will kind of reverse that and will go more rages and less bats because you get a lot more bats out of every bass spell. So you don't quite need that many to start to one shot buildings. So a Town Hall 11, definitely just get a lot of bats and then keep them alive. Put those dragons into a high concentration. Oh, look at that. That's a big 
downside of having the bats near your other air troops. Those balloons and the dragons can pull red air mines and they can kill your bats. Luckily, that didn't cause any problems here. He had the base pretty much down at that point, but we got to keep that in mind. We want to keep the dragons and the bats separated from each other so we don't pull red mines on it. So always uh, like don't deploy them like over the top of each other, you know, keep them separated. All right, let's go look at some more attacks. All right, guys, check out this next one. Doctor made some weird choices on this one, and he did it a little bit unorthodox from how I would think to do it. But let's look at the strategy. Let's look at the base here. Let's talk about why he did what he did. So we got sweepers pointing up and to the left. We have multi infernos that are covering multiple air defenses and lots of wizard towers, all in close proximity. A very, very high value target there for the dragons. So we could definitely charge the dragons through one of these islands. But then where would we come with the bats? You might be thinking, all right, we'll just uh, charge this area here. We'll ward ability. We'll just like fight the sweeper. We'll eventually work our way to the Eagle Artillery. And we have to bat sweep in the bottom. There's tons of like point defenses down here that aren't going to really affect the bats. So we can just sweep the entire bottom side of the base. Like seems like a no brainer, right? Well, the problem is as the dragons would come off of this area, they would probably split in both directions. Like unless you had your funnel super, super tight, they'd probably go into the Eagle Artillery. And then even from there, they'd probably still split. Half of them would go down to the queen. Half of them would be fed up into these air defenses while the bats are trying to sweep around. And the queen would start picking off dragons in a hurry while these air defenses up here were picking off the rest. And there's not really clear access from this area to work their way up into these. So these air defenses would be shooting on them for a long time here while they tried to work through this uh, around this channel here and through these storages. It could work, but Doctor found a different way. Let's see how he did it. So Doctor... Use the same funnel as thinking with the queen. She steps in here. She can take out an air defense. Then she can continue on, take out some storages, forming the funnel very, very nicely. Now, this will set up for either side of the dragons to come in below her or, or above her. But he's going to set his dragons below. Now, the reason he's doing that is he wants to make sure that he takes out that queen. The queen can cause a lot of damage to dragons. And if you can get her down early, while you're inside the rage and inside of a ward ability, then you can get a lot more value out of your dragons because if they're kind of slowly fed into her, she can pick them off like crazy. He sends it a random hog up there. I don't know if I agree with that. Just a couple of archers are pulled out of there, but if you kind of avoid pulling a hound, then probably should, right? Just leave it in there. There's no reason to go and try to test for it, but look at this, um, pause here. Look at this hound that's crossing the base in the middle here. The air defenses are on the far side, but there are tons of black mines all over in this bottom area to stop like queen charges and stuff, right? or whatever else attack you want to go in. There's so many different air attacks here and the black mines play a huge part in how you want to attack, but he sends in the hound and the hound is not only going to draw all those mines so they're, so they're not going to be hitting the dragons, but as a pop in the middle base, they're drawing a whole bunch of red mines and pulling the CC. So now he can fight that CC ideally while you're under the war ability, fighting the queen and you have the rage down there to help you take out that CC very quickly. He sends in the soul summer to go take out this other air defense and uh, this mostly the Inferno there so that he can uh, have that area that based out with. And looks what he did on the top side. He sent in an Ice Golem to go take out one of the towers. And then he freezes both of these ones together and starts to bat directly on top of them. Then they can spread out from there. He's not doing a bat wave. He's doing a bat bomb. But he's using multiple freezes there instead of a rage. You could do a rage and you could try to do a freeze right there. Maybe two freezes to try to get the bats out of there. But... Let's not lose track of what's going on down in this uh, left side corner here. As the blues are starting to circle around, they can't quite get to that wizard tower. They don't take the air defense, but now the bats are sweeping through. He's got extra freezes, and he can get that down. So one shot to your bats there, and they're dead. So you definitely got to have your freezes on point, and you can definitely do some serious damage here. But look at this. He's going to sweep out the rest of the base here. The bats pretty much have it under control, and he has a whole bunch of uh, cleanup troops here. But... Be careful if you're using ground cleanup troops. I like to use all minions, but he decided he wanted to bring in a mix of wizards and goblins and archers. And if any of those step over to the CC before it's destroyed, they can still possibly pull out a hound that still might be in there or ice golems. And if you have a hound that comes out late and your dragons lock onto it and then they pop it and then the pups end up killing your dragons or delay you to a time fail, you'd be kind of upset, right? So just try to stick with air cleanup troops there and avoid these ground cleanup troops. They could potentially cause problems that you don't want to have to deal with. So Doctor, a little bit unorthodox, taking on a very anti drag bat base, but he gets it done. Good job. 
All right, guys, Doctor wasn't happy with one three star. He had to come back in here and get the six pack. Now look at this base here. We have all the wizard towers across the top arc of the base, but they're all close to the edge. Whenever we see exposed wizard towers, start to try to find different ways that you can take advantage of that and get ice golems into tanky positions to go and move back through those areas. We got multi infernos also in the middle of the base there on either side with sweepers pointing at them and the air defenses are spread throughout. But we got the CC up in the top corner of the base, making so the bottom of the base there has free reign to send the heroes in without pulling the CC. Now, a lot of times when we do that, we're going to have damaged CCs potentially, but it's hard to tell on this one. He waits until the heroes have almost run out of value, especially that queen. If we have a hound or something come out of the CC, we definitely don't want the queen getting locked onto it. But we can test what's in the CC and we can draw any damaged troops out and then we can fight them head on with the dragons while we're inside of the rage and inside of the warden ability. So we're not fighting them late in the raid there and having my dragons move in slow as they try to like chase down single skeletons and stuff like that can definitely cause some problems. So two archers gets the full pull there. There's a witch and a whole bunch of archers. He's able to make quick work of that and he can start to cross the base here. The stone slime is going to go out to the left inferno tower while the hound is going to cross over and tank it allowing that uh so I'm going to get full value there. Now, he's got the CC still in the middle of the base here. And that's potentially going to cause some major problems. But he's got the Ice Golem that's going to draw the CC out. Now, I would have dropped in a second Archer and had the Witch go down to the Dragons with the Archers. But then have all the Skeletons and the Goblins go up to like the Town Hall. But he uses the Ice Golem and that gets the job done. The Bats are going to spread out from the Wizard Tower. A couple freezes to work their way through it. And then the Stone Slammer dumps out on the other Wizard Tower and takes it down. And the Bats have freezes to protect any time they approach a Wizard Tower. And they can start to regroup after they break out of the base. And they can start to one-shot buildings now bat waves tend to have less power when they start in the middle of the base there if you start them on the edge and let the bats group up against point defenses before they engage in the splash that's going to be ideal but in these cases you want to start right on top of the inferno because it was kind of in a weird position where it couldn't really get the bats to path directly to it without taking a lot of glosses on the way in or wasting a lot of freezes so he just starts it and then he lets them regroup often it's a it's a good idea to let them start to bunch up into a big pack before they actually engage anything which is why we're gonna see drag bat wave a lot more than we're gonna see a drag bat like bomb because the bomb just spreads out in every direction it takes them a long time to regroup and gives them a chance to die but it works out for him doctor's definitely got an eye for it and he's able to take this base down guys we got a couple more because there's so many people using drag bat it's crazy so this next base is very, very anti-Queen Charge. Now let's look at it for one second. We got big pockets of Expos over here that make Queen Charges have super high damage density and be very, very difficult to move a Queen Charge in that area. Over here, we got Infernos that are guarding each other that we can't really access from the ground between the two compartments, which makes it very difficult to do that. But coming in from the air, it is perfect. So let's see how he sets it up here. He's just gonna do it very, very basic. He's gonna start off with an E-Drag on one side, use a balloon to go in there and take out the Arch Tower, preserve the health of that E-Drag, and the E-Drag can step up into some higher hit point structures and just get awesome chains and clear out that whole section. Using the natural dead spaces around these Inferno compartments as funneling points, he can have the King and the Queen come in the top side. Their job is to step their way through this big old Tessafar that pops up, but mainly they're going after the air defense and finishing the funnel on that side. Now look how the dragons are gonna path through. They're gonna have nowhere to go, but go right through these Infernos. He can rage through the Sweeper, while he's fighting the CC and shoot right to the other side of the base. The queen pops her ability, she'll get the air defense down, and the funnel is perfect. Dragons start to move the way through. He can use a hound if he wants because he's got that uh he's got that air defense right there. So if you want to throw in a hound there just to guard you through it, it's fine. But if you're gonna ward him right through there anyways, then you might as well just ward him, right? Looks like the ward is kind of veering off there a little bit. Not going straight to cover the entire pack. But there goes the warden to start to work his way through. And he pulls the CC and now the rage is gonna come down to help him fight that sweeper. Probably a little bit late on the rage there. Probably could have had the top group of uh, dragons and balloons there survive. And the dragons end up splitting off on the bottom side because the sweeper kept knocking them back. But the soul slammer comes in on the bottom. Now here's where the bass start to sweep through. There's only one splash damage defense up here. But there's a couple point defenses up here that he can have the bat start to group up on and he can start the bat wave. Instead of a bat bomb, you start on the, the point defenses that can't really fight back, let the bat start to group up into big packs. That way when they go into the defenses that can actually hurt them, they start to one shot them. So the rage comes down to protect the dragons and get them through that enemy queen. And then he freezes up the, not only the air expo, but grabs the wizard tower there and he's able to start having the bat sweep through. He's got a couple freezes. He's got an ice golem for the backside. I don't know what that ice golem was for. Kind of a waste of an ice golem. 
But the dragons are in the middle of base there. They're going to go into the wizard tower, take it, and it could potentially lose a handful of those uh, bats there for red mind pops. But luckily, it doesn't have that happen. And he has the soul slammer work his way to more splash damage. Like, sometimes your pathing for this attack for the dragons and the bats are going to be a little bit weird. So you just got to keep an eye, a close, close eye on the bats as they move to the base and find out where you can get the most value out of your freezes and just practice it. Make that judgment call, learn to make that judgment call, and you can definitely get this done. There we go. He got two extra freezes in this one, and he's absolutely blown this one out of the water. He probably should have gone for an extra rage there. Probably didn't need that many freezes. This would have been one of the cases where the dragons could have used that rage at the very start to get through the multi infernos and a second one to fight the queen and the sweeper and been able to work his way through the end of the base here because he didn't need those extra freezes. He had plenty of power to make it through. And look how many dragons survived anyway. It was kind of irrelevant. Let's uh, pop that into fast speed here. And I think we're going to go look at one more. Then we'll go check out that uh, that Siege Barracks Yeti Smash attack that I was teasing a little bit. And uh, that's pretty cool. All right. Let's go do it. Did I just say Yeti Smash? I meant Pekka Smash. There's no Yeti Smash in Town 11. All right. So we got the Eagle Artillery with a whole bunch of wizard towers around it. Now, my first instinct when I saw this base here was charge the Eagle Artillery, right? Well, we still have a whole bunch of splash damage all across the bottom of the base here. We got two multi infernos and we got two wizard towers down here that aren't freezable together. None of the splash damage on this base is freezable together. And that's one of the ways to stop bats in general is to spread the splash damage out so you can't freeze it in pockets. So let's see how he did it here. He's going to do it very similar to the last one. He's going to send in the E drag to form one side of the funnel. He's going to send in the king and the queen to form the other. But where the CC is, with all these little in juts all around the base with these corners, there's never really a safe spot to put the heroes. There always is a chance to pull the CC and they will during this one and you'll see how he deals with it. He'll have the E-Drag come in with a couple of balloons. They find a couple of tests up by the Eagle Artillery and they're able to work their way through that area. But look at the King. The King ends up stepping all the way in there and he pulls the CC. Now that's going to cause the Queen to lose a ton of her value there as she still has her ability and she's going to get locked on the Hound and she's going to have to pop it. So he pops the Queen ability early to try to get the Hound down before she gets struck and the Dragons are going to have to deal with the pups or the Queen will die. Now the Hound is still standing there so if he acts quick he has a safe spot that he's already chosen out. Anytime you have a chance that you're going to pull the CC and you could have a Hound or Ice Golems come out or even Witches. Sometimes you have witches, you throw an archer on the opposite side of the base there early and it can draw those CC troops out of the way of the dragons and that way the witches can step up in the dragons while the skeletons get pulled on the side and get anything distracted. Now he's ending the stone salmon to go down to the eagle artillery and he missed his angle there so it didn't go directly into it and started circling around it. Luckily some dragons broke off there and they'll go over and take it out. The ward ability is popped in the middle of the base there with the rage while he's fighting the big meat of the base in the inside there and he starts to have the bass sweep on the bottom side he's got multiple freeze spells to carry him through tons of freezes now if you're ever concerned about how many freezes you're going to need like don't be afraid to like get like five freezes and drop down to six bat spells it's totally worth it keep the bats that you already have alive rather than making more like what's the point of having all those extra bats if you're already one-shotting six bat spells is more than enough find the troll test in the corner the bats sweep over there and take it out but look how many dragons he has left He's got the Hound there, and he tries to try the Hound a little bit out of the way there with that Wizard, but the Bats can make quick work of the of the Pups there, but only while they can fight back. If the Pups are following a big pack of Bats because you have a Popped Hound before all the defenses are down, then the Pups are fast, and they can keep up and they kill a lot of Bats, so be very, very careful with that. And there we go. Darth Hopper, I believe, also got the Six Pack, but we're going to go check out that last attack that is going to be the P.E.K.K.A. Smash with the Siege Barracks, which is just kind of a fun thing to toss in the end. All right, guys, check it out. Pekka Smash with the Siege Barracks. Now, this attack is very, very good against super compact bases. Look at this base. It is just packed in here with all the Infernos, the Eagle Artillery, tons of Expos. A lot of times you'll see those like Diamond bases where you have tons and tons of super heavy defenses packed into the bottom of the base. And then you have like a thin outer ring around the top. This is that same style base, just a different take on it. But this attack works really, really well against those because when you go into these super high concentration damage areas, Pekkas can handle it. You throw a couple of healers on them, you get a couple of rages down and a couple of Kokolus to soak up black mines on the entry and you're going to be golden. Now it's got the quad quake and the quad quake is going to do wonders to not only get all these buildings down to half health, but then give you access to everything in the area. Another jump to get you through and we have an E-drag and the king and the siege barracks to help form the funnel. Now. We want the king generally to go on the outside of this attack. We want the king 
to form the funnel but not take the healers because healers get reduced healing whenever they are on heroes. So we want the heroes to stay out of the way. Either we want the queen and the warden sit in the back. We want the P.E.K.K.A.s to carry the healers and we want the king on the outside. That way, as the P.E.K.K.A.s are moving through the base, they hold the healers the entire time. They stay in a tight pack there with bowlers behind them and they just rip the base apart. Now, you might be saying, why not use a stone slammer? This attack is traditionally done with a stone slammer, but ever since the siege barracks came out and you realize that the P.E.K.K.A. has about the same health as a stone slammer, you're getting all the wizards for free. Why not use them, right? Like you're not using the stone slammer to get any access. Normally we'd send it on the back side of the base and we'd have it go in and just go clean up whatever's left. But we can have the hogs come out of the siege barracks. We do just say, we can do the exact same thing. Now the quad quakes gonna give them access, gonna weaken up all those buildings. Rage comes down, the healers hit the rage inside of the ward ability and we can use the ward ability to drive as quickly as possible through this high, high damage area. And then we put these stone, or the siege barracks on the side of the base there where we want the hogs to start to sweep through and tear out the backside of the base. The healers will keep the main group alive. That frees up a heal spell to go with the hogs. Now the hogs can get hit, uh, hit by a couple of uh, wizard towers over there. They're going to hit by a couple of spring traps, but those are some high level hogs. They're going to keep on moving there and they're going to tear it apart. The jump comes down and the jump is going to get the P.E.K.K.A.s into tanky positions, not only protecting the hogs there, but the healers are still keeping everything alive. He walked right past that multi-inferno at the start. And I don't know how he missed it, but he sends in a wizard on the top side to start to collapse in on that side and drive the P.E.K.K.A.s back towards that Inferno. And that Inferno almost causes the fail here. I don't know how he missed it. Everything walked right past it. But he's got the wizards on the outside pushing all the P.E.K.K.A.s when they break out to go downward on the base and start to circle around. The P.E.K.K.A. stayed out in front of the queen and they protected her so she didn't need the healers and she could continue following along and staying behind them using them as protection. So we'll pop it into times two here as he starts to circle around. But guys, very cool strategy. Definitely worth checking out, especially when those super compact bases always think this one. Dragbat kind of suffers against those uh, super compact. It does wet better against more spread out bases, especially when you can uh, take out an air defense while forming the funnel. But there we go. Move into the final defenses. And notice that um, if you notice at the start of the attack here, it was almost exactly a three minute attack. Like, this literally came down to the wire here. The queen broke through the wall. The ward is already pinging on the inferno. And the queen barely got through. And he caught this one on the buzzer. So his other one, he did get the six pack with this exact same strategy. And he went after another super compact base. And he did almost exactly the same thing. But he did a lot more clean. And, uh, yeah. It was really cool. Very cool attack here. Definitely give it a shot and give the drag bat a shot too if you haven't brought it out in a while. Both very, very strong attacks and definitely worth practicing at Town 11. All right, guys, that's where we're going to wrap it up for today. Thanks everyone for coming out and joining me. Make sure you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to use code ERIC. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.